Hey guys, Jessica again. So today we're going to talk about fluid and electrolytes. And with fluid electrolytes, like I did not get it until after the test and the teacher did a drawing to make it make sense about hypertonic, isotonic, and hypotonic. So I have a separate video on that that uh, is a picture diagram from that that may help you. So make sure you check that out. But we're going to talk today just about um, kind of what I learned in fluid electrolytes and how it can make sense for you and help you do well in class. So there's two kind of pressures that we deal with um, that help affect fluid and electrolytes. There's your oncotic pressure and your hydrostatic pressure. Your hydrostatic pressure is pushing out. So any of the um, proteins or fluids is pushing out. Your oncotic pressure is pulling. I think like oncology, you're pulling for the person if they're in oncology, we're pulling for you. But oncotic pressure is also the same as proteins, and proteins pull. So if you remember that, that will help you remember which direction the fluids would be going um, depending on what pressure. So oncotic pressure and hydrostatic pressure, obviously they do two different things, so they oppose each other. Um, oncotic pressure tries to keep fluid into your intravascular space or into your in your vessels. And... Um, it's important because it helps keep your vascular volume or your blood volume maintained. Um, if your proteins are low, remember proteins pool, so if you proteins are low, they're not pulling the water into the spaces, so fluid is then leaking out into the tissues and can cause edema and even third spacing, where it can cause some other serious complications. Um, most plasma proteins will use oncotic pressure in the capillary spaces. So hydrostatic pressure then, um, is pushing out so it's pushing the solutes out so if your hydrostatic pressure is low the correct fluid balances uh, aren't being maintained so that's something to keep an eye on as well so let's talk about hormones so there's a couple hormones that help regulate blood volume and your fluid and electrolytes the first one is ADH your antidiuretic hormone if you think a diuretic you take a diuretic to pee to pee large amounts generally so if it's antidiuretic it's causing you to save water basically and not pee that water out. It, um, there's osmoreceptors in your hypothalamus that will sense a concentration of the blood and if it's too concentrated or if there's not enough water basically it will release your antidiuretic hormone or your ADH and it tells your body to save water and that's released by your posterior pituitary. So that helps regulate the amount of water that your kidneys are absorbing. ADH has nothing to do with sodium balances. So with ADH, if your sodium's higher, sodium's low, it doesn't really have anything to do with that. It's mostly about how much water you have and what the concentration is. So if there's no ADH available, then your patient is going to pee five to ten times normal volume. I mean, they're just going to be peeing like a racehorse, basically. <laughs> okay, and then there's aldosterone. I think Al likes salt water. I love Al. <laughs> He loves salt. He likes to hold it. So al, aldosterone, regulates sodium that's reabsorbed by your kidneys. So it helps maintain that balance. It's produced in your adrenal glands um, and the cortex will release it when needed. Low blood pressure will stimulate aldosterone. So if you have low pressure, not enough fluid uh, in your vessels and low sodium to move things out, um, then your kidneys uh, in response to aldosterone will start saving sodium to make sure that you have enough. And then there's your ANP and your BNP. The ANP atrial natriuretic peptide and the BNP, I think it's body's natural P is the way I look at those BNP letters. So basically the BNP and ANP, they are in the ventricles of your heart. So they act as a diuretic. If they sense that your heart um, is getting overloaded with fluid, the stretch in those ventricles of the heart will signal the kidneys to release the ANP and BNP and that helps get rid of fluid and make urine. So roughly 2.2 pounds of weight gain can equal one liter of water. So really your patient gains two pounds, they could have an extra liter or thousand milliliters of fluid on their body which is not a good thing. So um, let's talk about labs, okay? You have your BUN, your creatinine, and your hematocrit, which are general uh, labs that you would want to look at. Your BUN and your hematocrit, basically, if you look at them the same way, you're going to do well on your test. Your, BUN, your BUN and your hematocrit, if, if they're high, 
I think they're dehydrated. So you get your high high in there. Okay, so hematocrit, if it's high, they're dehydrated. If it's low, they're on fluid overload, low, low. Okay, weird, but it will help you remember it. So remember, hematocrit and BUN, if it's high, they're dehydrated. If the hematocrit is low, they are on fluid overload. So um, you would need to make sure you look at my video that I posted on hypertonic, isotonic, and hypotonic. Um, just to go over a few things, isotonic IV fluids, that's like normal saline, D5 normal saline, D5W, and LR. So isotonic fluids are used when you um, someone's dehydrated or they've lost a lot of blood and you need to just get their total blood volume up. Um, hypertonic, so too much tone, hypertonic, um, it's gonna call, it's gonna mean that there's low water in the vascular space, so it's gonna pull water from the cells into the blood vessels to help balance the fluid and electrolytes there, and the cells are gonna shrink. Um, in that case, the hematocrit, BUN, and creatinine would be increased because if they're high, then they're dehydrated. You don't have enough water. Um, hypertonic IV fluids that would be given would be D5LR, D5NS, D5 and half normal saline, and D10W. And then if someone's hypotonic, they have low tone and way too much water, so then what's going to happen is they uh, will be pushing fluid from the intravascular space into the cells and the tissues and the cells it will cause them to swell. Your blood would then be more dilute when you look at it, low serum levels, it's low, low tonicity and hypotonic IV fluids really the only one is half normal saline. Okay so I hope that helped you guys on that and then I am going to move on to the next video.